Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at a hobby project of mine called the Wolf Spider. A brief overview of the component diagram starting with the browser where I'm using Sigma JS to render the graph. In deployment I use Nginx as an application server. We won't be using that today because I'm running locally. I'm using Python and Flask to power the web service which also handles the responsibility of ingesting network data from Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm using Elasticsearch for search. I'm using that externally to Titan. You can use it bundled with Titan, but I already had some code sitting around that did what I needed, so the path of least resistance was to just continue using it that way. Here's the fun part, the Rexter API that sits on top of the Titan database. You'll see here that I have some Wolf Spider extensions that get deployed and run as part of Rexter. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And I'm using Cassandra as the backing data store for Titan. This is the Wolf Spider dashboard, and what we're taking a look at right now is a single Facebook network that belongs to a friend of mine named John. This is him here in the center. As you can see, when I mouse over a node, it grays out all the people that that person is not connected to. And one of the things that should be immediately clear is that John is connected to everyone. Wolf Spider is capable of loading multiple LinkedIn or Facebook networks for aggregate analysis. But right now I have it configured in multi-user mode because I want to show off some of the compartmentalization and security features that you would use if you were going to deploy this like I do sometimes and allow multiple people to use it. I've loaded up the Gremlin shell because one of the first things I want to do is remove John from his social network. Single user social networks like this can be a lot more fun to play with with the ego node removed. Don't forget that there could be multiple matches for a query like that so you have to put next on the end if, if you know you're only going to get one. I still forget that sometimes. Then I'm just going to pull John out. And don't forget to commit. Coming back to the Wolf Spider dashboard now, you can see that with the ego node removed, the communities really become a lot more apparent. The layout here is being generated on the server using Jung. Jung is an open source graph algorithms library. It's got a ton of great stuff. If you are into this sort of thing and you haven't played with it yet, I highly suggest you check it out. I get dodgy results with the Force Atlas algorithm. I think probably just because I haven't really tuned it. So I typically will run the Force Atlas 2 implementation as a Sigma JS plugin on the browser. It takes a little bit longer to get settled, but on the flip side, you do get to watch it, which is pretty fun. The colors that you're seeing here are based on the modularity groups that I'm calculating using the modularity module from Gephi. It's an implementation of the Louvain community detection algorithm. A little background on what some of these colors actually represent here in hot pink we've got John's mom's side of the family here in purple we've got John's dad's side of the family over here on the right this entire area basically represents hometown we've got John's high school friends mostly individuals in his grade in green in yellow we've got a lot of the individuals that went to the same high school but were in his brother's grade and then in orange we've got individuals that went to one of the two neighboring high schools. Here in blue, we're looking at the people that he and I worked with during our summer job, high school through college. Over here in light blue, we've got the college crew, then both the first and second job. He ended up working both of his jobs in Philadelphia where he also went to college. So you can see there's a lot of interconnectivity between those three clusters. One of the things I want to make sure I'm totally clear about is that when I talk about the properties that define these communities, things like individuals that went to college together or mom's side of the family, dad's side of the family, the modularity and layout algorithms didn't utilize any of that information in their implementation. So they operate solely on the properties of the graph. And one of the things that we were really blown away by when we first got this stuff working was 
how accurately they depicted the the communities and accurately assigned the individuals in this graph and we started to dive in to say okay what do these colors mean who's in what group and why and we saw oh this is college this is job one this is job two mom's side of the family dad's side of the family hometown all accurately depicted and how the work people jumped out to be their their own little deep blue cluster we just got really excited about it it was so cool to see how well those algorithms performed with minimal amounts of tweaking we're going to check out one of the cool features about wolf spider which is search i can put just about anything in here and what it'll do is it'll go out to the elastic search component execute a query pull back the node and then go to titan and pull in the neighborhood for whatever nodes were found i happen to know that there's three Ditzlers floating around in this graph. So you can tell that when I just search for Ditzler, I'll get a couple of them. Should be one of them right here. This is my friend Greg. If I want to specifically just get Greg's neighborhood, I can do that by making my query a little bit more refined. Another feature of Wolf Spider that I think is really cool is what I like to call the grapevine. The way this works is you specify one individual's name, the word to, and the second individual's name, kind of like if you were looking for directions in Google Maps or something like that. And what this shows you is all of the paths of shortest path length that connect these two individuals in the network. We can take a look at the implementation for that algorithm. What we're looking at here, uh, this is Groovy. It's a Rexter extension. So this is code that I write, but deploy to Rexter as a plugin. So it runs inside the Rexter Titan component. And that's really advantageous from a performance perspective because you're interfacing directly with the graph inside a single JVM. So you don't have to worry about any network IO occurring when you wanna perform graph operations. And also just from a development perspective, I get to write everything in Groovy, which is a fun language, but most importantly, uh, I get to use Gremlin directly, so it gives me a, a tremendous amount of power for executing graph operations. That's what we're seeing here. I come in, I find the source node by name, I find the destination node by name, I have indexes on this property, so these execute really quickly. Then I run a shortest path detection algorithm. I have it set to cap out at 10 hops. This will find one shortest path, but when I thought about you know actual use cases for this, it's not like driving somewhere where you just want to know the fastest way. You want to know what your options are. So I figure out the size of that path, and then I actually calculate all of the paths between the source and destination that are of that length. So that kind of provides those different alternate paths, different options. One of the things that blueprints provides is the ability to apply a partition graph which is kind of like applying a mask over your entire graph the way it works is you specify a partition key for every node and then you can later apply a partition graph onto your full graph with a particular partition key and it'll ensure that you can only access the subnetwork of nodes and edges that contain that partition key and the motivation for that is, you know, I have this set up right now to be deployable so that multiple independent users can use Wolf Spider at one time. And I don't want one person to be able to see the other person's network. And on the, on the search side, what I do is I index the partition key as a field in every object that I index. So when I execute a search, I apply a filter so that I only get results back that contain that partition key. Then when I pull in subgraphs or when I do grapevine or something like that, I specify the partition, blueprint supplies the partition graph, and then I can, op I can operate with it as if it were any other graph and it'll take care of making sure that I only get nodes and edges back that the particular user has permission. To my goal for making this video was really to share my excitement about a lot of these technologies. I had a blast working on this project. There were very few aspects of it 
that became kind of a pain. Um, I will point out that Facebook and LinkedIn integration can be a bit of a challenge, especially if you're new to OAuth. I'm pretty nerdy, but deploying Nginx with SSL isn't exactly my idea of a good time. Other than that, I had a blast working with these with these technologies. Sigma JS is a lot of fun to work with. If you're familiar with JavaScript, you should be able to get up and running with it in no time. There's a lot of really good examples, a lot of diverse examples that probably provide a starting point for whatever it is that you want to do, a place that you could work from. Elasticsearch is great. It never pisses me off. It always does what I expect it to, and it just works. Uh, Rexter, Titan, and Blueprints ecosystem has a lot of fantastic documentation. Also, always just works. If you know Java, you should be able to get up and running pretty easily. If you know Groovy, you'll have an even better head start. Check out the Gremlin tutorials. Take a look at gremlindocs.com. I'll provide a link to that. There's lots of really good documentation and places to get started there.